Linda was a part of our uh, weekly Bible studies, and uh, we had great interactions uh, with her. And it, it's a privilege and a pleasure to uh, lift her and her family and friends up in prayer. Oh, Father God, um, thank you for the folks that have turned out this morning um, and showing love uh, for Linda. Lord, we, we ask that you would uh, draw us to yourself and strengthen us uh, in this hour, in this time, Lord, uh, as people feel weak and uh, weary um, and are just amazed. Uh, Lord, what an inspiration Linda was to so many people, Lord. We remember her courage, Lord. Um, she had the courage of many legislators all put together. Um, and she uh, just had a passion when she uh, believed in something. Um, she believed uh, passionately with all her heart. And uh, uh, we just thank you for the many uh, good memories uh, that we have of her, Lord. Um, uh, I remember specifically, Lord, how, how she just really wanted uh, more pastors uh, to minister to legislators at the Capitol. That uh, was one of her major pleas, and um, we've done what we can, and others have as well, and, um, uh, and Lord, we just want to honor her and, and her family, and I pray that you would uh, comfort uh, all who are um, in need of comfort at this time um, and uh, bless uh, the, the rest of the speakers and, um, and uh, I pray that we would celebrate the, the life that uh, she lived and uh, we pray this in Christ's name. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Jason. Um, we'll go ahead and, and move right along. Um, I've asked Aaron Hogan, who had most recently worked for uh, Senator Collins in 2017, to uh, uh, share anything that you might like to say. I've asked these people to share because this may be the, one of the only times where they have a venue to share their heart uh, and soul. Uh, to the public about uh, the memory that they have of Linda. Aaron. My name is Erin Hogan. Uh, I previously worked for Senator Collins as a very close aide, assistant, and friend during the 2017 legislative session. I'm also a former Republican County Chair in District 19 where Senator Collins served as State Senator and where I worked very closely with her. I would first off like to thank, thank you for your prayers for Senator Collins' family, her friends, and her former colleagues. She was very dear to so many of us it's hard to uh, not have her here. Nothing could have prepared us for this loss. Her passing has left a great void in our state, our party, and our hearts. As Linda's former aide and very close friend, I got to see much of the behind the scenes work that she did here at the Capitol. She was one of the most incredible people that I've ever known, and in my opinion, one of the best state senators to ever grace the state of Arkansas. She was very dear to so many people back at home in her district and across the state. Linda loved her district and her constituents, and she worked very, very tirelessly to be there for them whenever they needed her. I remember watching her work all day here at the Capitol, and once her day was finished, she would pack up in the vehicle and take me along. We would hop in there, we would drive two hours, however long it took to get back to the district, 
and uh, we would be at the meeting or event that she was going to for a couple hours, and then we would hop back in the car. <laughs> we would hop back in the car and get back here to Little Rock so that she would be here for work the next morning. We had a lot of long, good, heartfelt talks together on those drives. And when we were not talking, she was on the phone helping someone. <laughs> That's who she was. When everyone else was worn out and tired, had gone home, gone to bed, she was still working. Sometimes I would receive text messages from her at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. And thank the Lord I did not see them until the next morning because I valued my sleep. <laughs> I will miss her phone calls very much. There's a quote by Abraham Lincoln that truly personifies who Linda was. It says, quote, Be sure you put your feet in the right place and then stand firm. Linda had a core set of values that made up who she was. She lived them out and stood firm on them no matter the cost. She was the same person behind closed doors as she was outside. She was a true conservative, a patriot, a stateswoman, and my very, very dear friend. I'm going to miss her terribly, but I know that we can all find comfort in knowing that she is with God in heaven and at peace. I can never thank her enough for her invaluable influence on my life and the lives of so many others. I can honestly say that I would not be where I am without her. Please continue to keep her family in your prayers during this very difficult time. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Next up, ask someone who I know, uh, New Linda Whale was there in the district battling alongside her uh, when she, and then they served in the, at the state capitol together. Um, we were talking this weekend about uh, how boisterous and Linda was and how she would end speeches like this. <laughs> you knew that, that was her signature uh, move, that's what they call it. Um, so I've asked the uh, Senator Missy Irvin to the chair, too. <clears throat> the first time I met Linda, it was a stormy night, and it was in Pocahontas, and it was at the Eddie May Heron Center. Um, we were at a pass supper. And Linda was dressed in her red suit with her red lipstick on. She was animated. She was passionate. I was there with my four children who were very young at the time, but who were quickly becoming my little political consultants. Um, Linda gave this rousing speech about the Second Amendment, about protecting the life of unborn children, about the need to support small businesses. Um, and she ended with, vote for me in the Democrat primary. And my children all turned and looked at me in astonishment. And she, they said, Mom, she just gave your speech. They didn't understand why she was running in the Democrat primary and I was in the Republican. Because it's all the things that I was saying. Um, we became friends on the campaign trail in 2010. Uh, we, we worked together. We were at every campaign event in Randolph County and Sharp County and Independence County. Um, and we became fast friends, even though we were in different parties. And lo and behold, uh, that year, that whole area of the state of Arkansas elected women. They elected Linda, they elected me, and Representative Lori Benedict. Um, you know, Linda knew that I had to drive a very long distance from Mountain View to Pocahontas and to Randolph County, and she would worry about me driving home late um, at night after different events. So she would put me up in her hotel, free of charge. Um, and so I stayed in her version of the jungle room. She loved Elvis um, for several nights, and she did that for me. And um, that was she was so warm and and. and wanted to help people so much. 
Um, we were both elected and we were so honored to be able to serve the great people of Randolph, Sharp, Independence, Fulton Counties in the legislature. Linda had a really tough session, um, that first session. She became ill, um, seriously ill. And many of you may remember, bless her heart, she had to carry with her a backpack on her back. Her stamina and her staying powers just was tremendous. I mean, she came here and she was sick, sick, sick. Um, but she never wanted to miss a day. She never wanted to miss a day. Um, and it was representatives Lori Benedict and Ann Clemmer, Andrea Lee, Debbie Hobbs, Donna Hutchinson, Kathy Webb, so many of the women in the house, they took such great care of her and helped her recover. Um, and she told me that if it hadn't been for them, she didn't know if she would have been able to survive that. Um, Lori and I and many others were honored that Linda would reach out to us for advice. And we were so supportive in her decision. It was a tough decision to leave the friends that she had made in the Democrat Party, but then to join the Republican Party. Um, and we were honored to be there to support her. Senator Alan Clark wrote this about Linda. Life experience is not the least of the qualities that Senator Collins brings to the job. Having lived long enough to experience the travails of real life, raising children to adulthood, caring for aging parents, etc., nourishes the maturity to make the tough decisions. He also wrote about Linda. She loves the people of her district and is conscientious about representing them. She was so passionate about so many different issues, and I just want to honor her today by speaking a little bit about those issues she was so passionate about, education and school choice. She was a graduate of the Wiener School District. She lived through school consolidation. She understood very personally what the decisions we make here at the Capitol mean for people in their real world and their real lives because of the school the consolidation issue in the Wiener School District. She lived through that heartache and she watched that community suffer through that. Um, it hurt her beloved community. I went and I visited that community with her. Um, I visited her old school and her town and she spoke so dearly of her childhood and the memories of her school. Linda was a leader with the hospitality industry. She knew the business very well. She was an accomplished businesswoman. She loved and was so proud of the Rock and Roll Highway and her work in Randolph, Randolph County promoting tourism and Pocahontas. Um, she loved to dance and she loved Elvis. And she was passionate about child welfare reform. She was right there helping us every step of the way to ensure that children were taken care of in the state of Arkansas. She was passionate about victims' rights, understanding that in the courtroom we need to always pay special attention to the victims and what they are suffering, the pain and the, and the suffering that the families have. In fact, her last interview on social media was with victims about victims' rights. She was a fierce defender of the Second Amendment, but an even fiercer defender and protector of life and a warrior for unborn children. And this is what I will always remember most about her. She was true to her views because of the deep belief in God and in His Word. She was a Christian and she wasn't afraid to ruffle feathers to let you know about what His Word said about that issue. And so as I meditated on the many, many memories I have of Linda, from campaigning to our time here in the Senate and in the Capitol, it became very, very clear to me what I needed to do and say to you today. I opened this book, and that's where I gained my comfort. Linda would have wanted us to shout it and yell it from this dome of this Capitol, Jesus' words to us. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Linda would have wanted us to stay the course, to keep fighting for the truth, to have the courage to stand up and speak out for what is just and what is right in the eyes of God, to follow his word, to seek forgiveness, to be humble, to be kind, and to serve her neighbor. We honor her and all of those loved ones we have lost. When we seek God's will, when we seek his love that we are to share with others.
can we grant grace and mercy for those who are against us? When we are constant in prayer, constantly for the guidance of His Holy Spirit in all that we do and in all that we say, Linda would have wanted us to remember these words. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not dis disappoint us. Because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom He has given us. Linda was a fire breather. His favorite color was red. And it's not lost on me that the church this past Sunday just celebrated Pentecost. May we all burn with the Holy Spirit to share God's love with each other. And that's how we honor Linda. We will miss you, Linda, but we will not forget you. We have to cling to the hope and promise God gives us as we struggle to understand this incredible tragedy. Your voice may have been taken away, but what you stood for will never be silenced. I came across something that she wrote, and so I invite you to join with me in this prayer written by Linda. Let us pray. God, help those children who need love and protection. And may we as legislators make sure change takes place to help them get the upbringing and love they need. God bless Arkansas, and God bless the United States of America. On behalf of all the members of the Arkansas General Assembly and the legislative staff that she worked with, we extend our deepest sympathy, love, and continuous prayers for her family. We stand with you in seeking justice for Senator Collins. Thank you, Senator Irvin. Uh, last, I've asked uh, Senator Gary Stubblefield, uh, who served with Linda in the State House, to share. Thank you, Ken. It's an honor for me to be here today. I was in uh, New Mexico last week when a, a guy called me and told me that they had found uh, a lady in northeast Arkansas that they thought was on the college. And I said, well, you're wrong. Well, you can't be right. Uh, because when it was larger than life, and I didn't believe it. And about an hour later, he called me back and he said, it's true. Uh, we have lost a, a ray of light in a dark world. Linda and I uh, were very close friends, and we shared a lot of things together. We went in the house together in 2010. And let me tell you a little, let me give you a little wisdom. Don't, don't ever form an opinion of someone before you know them or you've talked to them. Because Linda said, she was a Democrat and I was a Republican, and she said, across the house chamber from me. And the first time I saw her, I thought, who's this beautiful blonde-headed lady? And she, she carried herself so professionally, and I thought, he's got to be a, an elitist or an intellectualist of me. You know, this old country boy that grew up in the country poor, we probably aren't going to get along with you. <laughs> so it was a couple of weeks, there was a group of us legislators went out to eat, and we were, we were sitting at the table, and Linda was sitting right across from me, and, one of the legislators asked me what branch was, and I began to tell him about where I was born and how I grew up and you know, how I grew up poor. And, you know, at night, my mother, what we had for supper was a pan of cornbread and milk, and we went barefooted all summer. And all of a sudden, this blonde little lady jumps in and she said, Well, you was raised the same way I was raised. And I said, Really? And she said, And then I started hearing words like, uh, Y'all. By golly, and that gimmick, and I thought, you know what? This girl looked like Ellie Mae Clinton, and she was rocking her well. Now, she's a whole lot more country than I, I ever imagined. And, and after that, we became very, very close friends. And, and I don't know of one issue that came before us that Linda and I did not agree on. I admired her tenacity. I told her one time, I said, if you were a football player, you'd be a linebacker. No doubt. She would be a linebacker. 
And I want to say something to the family. I know what Linda is this morning. Uh, I know that because Linda and I had a lot of uh, deep spiritual conversations. And Linda shared with me her testimony. And if you've accepted, if you've ever accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have testimony. That's your story. Your story is what your life was like before you accepted the Lord as your Savior. And how you come to know the Lord as your Savior. And how knowing Him has changed your life. That's your story. Let me have a story. And she shared it with me multiple times. So family, lend us with Jesus this morning. She, uh, she left a, a legacy that those of us that knew her so well will never forget. And if she could stand here this morning, she would tell us, you just keep fighting. Because she loved children, she loved the unborn, she could not stand injustice, she worked hard for justice, and I worked with her on a lot of those issues. She was incorruptible. You could not buy her in the college. Those are the kind of people we need in this capital. You could not buy her. She had true values, core values, that were not available. Uh, she's going to be missed. And I, I often thought, you know, we just got to celebrate the world day. That if she had been in one of those handicrafts at Omaha, Utah, and Omaha, she would have been the first one. <laughs> no doubt in my mind. She would have been running, charging that German army. That was Linda. When she knew she was right, nothing was going to stop her. I will miss her, and I, my prayer is that God will pour out His grace and peace on her family today. Thank you all for, for being here and honoring her in this way. <clears throat> Thank you all for uh, sharing today. Like I said, I know the families uh, uh, are watching, and I know they appreciate the stories and the kind words and the prayers and the thoughts. Um, they've asked me to kind of step away from my professional capacity and share my own personal thoughts and feelings. Um, <clears throat> I met Linda in 2010 when I was working for Mark Martin. I was uh, 22. Uh, like many people, especially as someone who just got out of college, my first impression is uh, who is this woman? She is off the rocker. <laughs> and I mean, you know, little did I know that uh, we'd become good friends. And I would let her uh, work for her on her uh, Senate campaign. And um, <clears throat> you know, I said this weekend that um, this is not the press that I ever thought I would ever be doing. And I woke up this morning uh, just in a panic because I was felt I was unprepared, found it extremely difficult to express uh, my sadness in the, word, in the words or on paper, because these would be the times that uh, Linda would be there for. As a young man, she was one of the few people that reached out to me when I lost my election in 2014, and even more so, she would continue to reach out to me asking about what I was doing, how I was doing, whether or not I was praying, and uh, she would continually pray for me. Uh, in her campaign in 2014, we'd have early morning coffee by ourselves in her campaign office, and we'd sit there and argue about signs and sign waving, which I didn't agree with, but I always lose that discussion with her. And uh, there are just little things. You see this photo. This was her favorite professional photo. Y'all have no idea 
the discussions we had about which professional photo she wanted to use, and we talked and talked about it, and we finally said, okay, well, send me two or three. She sent me about 15 to 20 photos. <laughs> and we'd be right back where we were. Uh, even, uh, I'll end with, with this so I can get to uh, the family's statement. But uh, even after I stopped working for her, uh, she always had a task or job for me to do for her, and I was always happy to oblige. I was, I was on lifetime employment for Linda. And uh, if you knew Linda, I hope you'll find this in, in, in jest, uh, but even in her passing, she still has me working for her. <laughs> I want to thank y'all for your prayers, for myself, the family, and our friends. It means more to them and to us than I know they will ever be able to thank you for. Um, I want to say this as probably fun but not mean as I can, is that please respect their family. Please share only official news from the police and from the funeral home. Respect and honor Linda's memory. Remember her family when you start sounding off on social media, on media in general. It is a grave disrespect of the people that are dishonoring the memory of Linda. And they should know that. Now I will read a statement prepared by the family and answer a couple of questions the best that I can. The family statement. We want to thank everyone for the outpouring of love and prayers during this very difficult time. We ask for your understanding and being unable to speak about the ongoing investigation involving Linda Collins. As much as we want to speak to you, know that we also want and need to protect the integrity of this investigation. We are surprised, upset, angered, and saddened by this event and are at a loss for words in describing the feelings and emotions that we are currently going through. We are confident that the Randolph County Sheriff's Office and the Arkansas State Police are using all the resources available to find a resolution to this investigation and put our hearts and minds at ease. Linda would want all of us to be strong for her during this trying time. Let us honor her memory of all the wonderful things she said and did for so many people, regardless of political views or otherwise. She was always there to listen and to try to help where she could. She would always go above and beyond for people in need. At this time, the family is not taking questions in direct regard to the investigating proceedings. The funeral arrangements have been made readily available via the website located at uh, uh, fearsfuneralhome.com or on their Facebook page at Fear, Fears Family Funeral. In lieu of flowers, we respectfully suggest that donations be made to the St. Jude's Children's Hus Research Hospital at 262 Danny Thomas, Memphis, Tennessee, 38105. And online condolences can be sent to the family by uh, visiting Fierce Family Care Home. Uh, if you believe that you have pertinent information regarding this Linda's case, please contact the Arkansas State Police for the Randolph County Sheriff's Department. And now I will answer a, a couple questions the best that I can. What members of the family is this statement from? Uh, this is from their, their, fa their father, their son, and their daughter. Their son and their daughter. Uh, Linda's father. Linda's father, uh, Linda's son, and Linda's daughter. Any other questions? Uh, I appreciate um, everyone for coming and honoring uh, Senator Linda Collins today. As I mentioned at the beginning, 
and this will be uh, Secretary of State John Dershon has been kind enough to allow us to move these downstairs on the first floor, and we'll do that right after this, and you can pay your respects, leave cards, sign books. I will, I will personally hand deliver them to the, uh, to the family this weekend. And, um, yes, ma'am. Uh, not that I had in my way. It's the, uh, the event Friday is a visitation. Uh, the visitation is on Friday at Settler Free Royal Baptist Church in uh, um, Pocahontas from 4 to 8. And then I believe at 10 is the uh, funeral on Saturday. And the uh, uh, bur burial will be uh, private. It's family only. Yeah, well, thank you again. Uh, I appreciate y'all. This is. Amazing.